All right, so just a little bit of review about um, the breakdown of old red blood cells. Now, the first 35 slides of this PowerPoint is all review. Do that on your own, okay? This is kind of review. My suggestion is to read those first 35 slides. It's review of hematology and look at the first few slides or few pages of the hematology textbook. That's enough to get a just of hematology disorders. If you're still lost in some of the stuff that the, those slides are showing and what's in the textbook on those slides, then that's the part that you need to go back to the A&P book to get some kind of remediation for. But it should be enough to deal with understanding the diseases. So I kind of cut it down to, to that. One thing I want to go over just briefly, and it is in the 35 slides, is taking a red blood cell and breaking it up. Because red blood cells are missing something. Red blood cells are missing a DNA. nucleus. Right, a DNA, yes. Because inside the, the nucleus is DNA. So can they go through mitosis? No. Mitosis is splitting up the nucleus. So therefore, these cells are going to die. They only have a lifespan of how many days? 120 days. Okay? That's good to know that stuff, right? So they die. So what's happening here is that you have to have, let's say, I'm just giving you numbers so that you understand it. A hundred red blood cells are being made, a hundred are going to die. You've got to have that equal number. You can't have, let's say, 50 of them being made and a hundred of them dying. You're going to have some form of anemia. Or you can't have a hundred of them being made and 200 of them are leaving the body. That's going to be anemia. So it's understanding the concepts to break up this. Right? So it's got to be equal amount, equal dying. Okay? So we got to recycle this stuff so we can always make more. Now, the hemoglobin is broken down into two things. Heme and globin. Okay? Heme is where the iron is, and globin is all the protein. So you can read this on your own. We're going to talk about jaundice in a second, but let me just get right back, get right into the picture here, because it's a little bit easier to understand. Here you have bone marrow that's going to make red blood cells. They're going to live for 120 days. Then they get old. They don't move as much. They get very fragile. They start breaking up. They're not good anymore. So now after 120 days, they reach the liver, and there's macrophages in here. They're going to engulf them and start breaking them up. They're going to break this up into two things. The hemoglobin turns into heme, and that's where the iron is, and globin, which is proteins. So we got to take care of this. Well, in the heme, you got the iron, but there's also some other stuff in there. Right? I don't want to go into it. It's all A and P2 stuff. But it eventually, will, the liver will conjugate that extra stuff to something called bilirubin. We've got to get rid of that. And bilirubin is a, uh, has a yellow color to it. Okay? So what's going to happen here is that the globin, which is proteins, will be broken down to amino acids. Now that's an easy fix. Because those amino, ac amino acids could be used to make any kind of protein. So they're just going to re get recycled. That's a pretty easy thing on it. Or they could get gluconeogenesis, and they could actually make glucose. So it's breaking it down to amino acids. The heme is going to be broken down to iron. The iron is going to get recycled and put back into the bone marrow to make more red blood cells. It's a nice system there. Okay? The bilirubin has to leave the body. It's an exhaust. It's something you don't really need. So it goes out two ways. It can go out into the intestines, and it goes out your stool, and it's yellow, so that's why your stool is brown, because in order to make the brown color, I'm uh, sorry, I'm talking about poop, but uh, to make the brown color, you've got to add yellow to it, okay? If there's no yellow, then it's going to be black, so the yellow actually makes it brown. That's why you've got that color. So some of it will actually go into the intestines and go out your poop. Some of it will go back into the bloodstream. And eventually, the kidneys will take over that bilirubin and go out your pee. That's why your urine is yellow. Does that make sense? Okay. When old red blood cells rupture, the released hemoglobin is ingested by macrophages. The globin chains of hemoglobin are broken down to individual amino acids that are metabolized or used to build new proteins. Iron is released from the heme of hemoglobin.
The remaining structure is converted to Billy Verdon, which is then converted into Billy Rubin. Iron is transported by transferrin in the blood to various tissues for storage, or to red bone marrow for making new hemoglobin. Free bilirubin is transported by albumin in the blood to the liver. Liver cells make conjugated bilirubin, which is excreted as part of the bile into the small intestine. Intestinal bacteria convert bilirubin into bilirubin derivatives, which contribute to the color of feces. Some of the bilirubin derivatives are absorbed into the blood and excreted from the kidneys in the urine. Now, just want to mention one other thing, because I guess we'll get into it when we get into the GI system. Since the liver is the one that's going to break up this and conjugate this uh, biliverdin into bilirubin, if there's liver disease, then what will happen is some of this bilirubin is going to go into the bloodstream and it, the kidney gets overwhelmed and your body gets overwhelmed with all this bilirubin because it's not conjugated right and your body gets too much of it, so it starts seeping into your skin because your kidney can't take it all up. In that case, the skin starts turning yellow. It goes into the sclera, the whites of your eyes, and they start turning yellow. This is what we call jaundice. In babies, newborns, since the liver in some newborns is not fully developed, then it's not going to be, the liver of these newborns are not going to be able to conjugate this bilirubin, or turn into bilirubin. So the bilirubin, or it does, but it's, it doesn't turn it, it, it doesn't make it go out your poop, it stays in your bloodstream. Now in this case, the bilirubin will start going to the skin, these babies become very jaundiced, and what we're concerned about is that some of this bilirubin goes into the brain of the children. It doesn't happen so much in adults, but in the brain, and that can cause disease. What they want to do is make sure that the bilirubin in newborns, if the liver is not working well, because it's still underdeveloped, that the bilirubin goes into the skin of these newborns and eventually it'll go into the brain, called conicterus. I won't ask you about that now, but we will when we get into, you know, into the GI system. Connectors with a K, okay? That can cause encephal encephalopathy, all right? Brain damage. So we need to make sure that we can cut down on this bilirubin in newborns. So when these babies come out, if the liver is not fully developed, what do they usually do with the babies? They put something on the eyes so it doesn't hurt them. Ultraviolet light, right? I don't know exactly how the mechanism works, but when the ultraviolet light goes on these newborns, it breaks up the the bilirubin so that it can be conjugated and go out the pee, okay, or leave the body somehow. But they need to do that to prevent this bilirubin going up to the brain and causing um, connectors. Questions on that? So I want to give you a little bit about jaundice. And jaundice, you can see the yellows in the sclera here, all right? Also, you look at the hands, right? Here's a normal hand and here's one with jaundice. So you can see that. The liver, there's something wrong with the liver, cirrhosis of the liver, hepatitis, you're going to get this jaundice too because the liver can't break down the hemoglobin. All right? Questions on that? Okay. Now, let's talk about transporting iron. All right. 80% of the iron in your body is in the hemoglobin. It's floating around in hemoglobin. Okay? 20% is going to be in ferritin. Ferritin is a storage site of iron that's located mostly in the bone marrow, but it's also found in the spleen, muscle, and liver. So 80% is flowing around your bloodstream and hemoglobin, 20% is in the bone marrow. So now we've got to also get it from the bone marrow and put it into other things. We have transferrin. Transferrin is a protein made by the liver. That's going to bind to um, well, it's going to bind to the iron, and it's going to travel from one site to another. So it's like this little bus ride, okay? It's someplace inside the uh, the bone marrow. It's going to go from one place, you know, it's going to collect the, the recycled iron and then bring it to the place that's going to start making the uh, red blood cells in the bone marrow, okay? But then we also have um, total iron binding capacity, okay? Um, what this is, is, so transferrin, uh, hold up, ferritin, sorry, sorry, 
Transfer, and I'm thinking that ferritin is in the bone marrow. Transfer, and I'm sorry, transfer is actually in the bloodstream. Sorry. This is in the bone marrow. This is in the bloodstream. Does that make sense? We can measure this in the blood, uh, blood levels of transfer, or, um, transferrin. Now, this is like little buses that's going to travel from, let's say, the bone, going to the liver, and so forth. If, and the only people that can go on these buses is iron. So if the buses are full, then the total iron binding capacity is very low because it's full. But if there's empty seats on there that we can actually put more iron on it, then we're going to say that the TIBC is going to increase because there is more capacity to fit more iron on there. Does that make sense? So we're going to be using these words, especially when we get into iron deficiency. Ferritin, um, transferrin, and this total iron binding capacity. Does that make sense about these terms? Okay. Now, this is how you're thinking. If you understand the function, as we did with endocrinology, if you understand the function, then if it's too much or too little, it'll make sense. The only thing you've got to memorize is the name of the diseases. But the symptoms, pretty easy, if you know the function. The function of a red blood cell is to carry oxygen. The function of a white blood cell is to fight infection. The function of a platelet is to clot blood. So, if you have too much platelets, then you're going to have a hypercoagulable state. You're going to form a clot when a blood vessel is in broken yet. Not good. Thrombosis, right? If you have too little platelets, then you're going to have a hypocoagulable state, meaning that you're not going to be, you cut yourself, and normally you could stop the bleeding in four minutes with that particular cut. But now that particular cut in someone who's got a hypocoagulable state, it takes like 30 minutes to stop the bleeding, right? Hyper, a hypocoagulable state, right? If you have now let's talk about the red blood cells. If you have too little red blood cells, well, if it carries oxygen, you're going to be anemic. That's a pretty obvious one. And there's a lot of different anemias, which we're going to go over. If you have too many red blood cells, well, then we call it polycythemia. Now, you're thinking, well, geez, you have too many red blood cells. That means we've got a lot of oxygen. That's good. Well... Let's look at the whole picture here. If let's say one car, a red blood cell, can carry four people, all right, four, let's say four molecules of oxygen. If we put more of those cars on the highway, more of those red blood cells in the bloodstream, then can you see they're crowding up? What's happening to the traffic? Would it increase or decrease? It'll increase. So now to go from point A to point B is going to take slower. Now the blood gets thicker, more viscous, and it actually, because there's so much condensing of these red blood cells, it presses against the blood vessels and increases the resistance. And if you increase resistance, what happens to the blood pressure? It's pressing against the blood pressure or the blood vessels. It'll increase blood pressure. So someone who's got polycythemia, they can't get the blood to the designated place in a, in a very systematic way, in a very fast way, and their blood pressure goes skyrocket up because the blood is very thick. It's viscous with all these extra blo red blood cells, just the way traffic is on the highway. Does that make sense? Okay. Then we have white blood cells. Fights infection. So if you have too little white blood cells, you've got some sort of immunodeficiency. AIDS, HIV, right? Um, as you're getting older, your immune system goes down. Um, if you're on immunosuppressive medications, corticosteroids, it's going to suppress the... So you're thinking that. If you have too many white blood cells, well, that could be one or two different things. It could be an appropriate thing or it could be inappropriate. Appropriate. Let's say white blood cells are killing infections. As much as police on this campus are going to stop all those burglars going into the dormitories. Well, if you have a lot of crime going on here, so 
Don't you want to get more police on campus and that will bring down the crime? Same way here. If you have an infection in your body, then your body is going to compensate and make more white blood cells to take on that pneumonia or whatever you got. So that's, a, that's an appropriate response. Okay? And inappropriate is that it starts picking on and making white blood cells so much that they're immature and they don't function. That's leukemia. And we'll talk about that too. Okay? So questions about this? This is the same. I use the same slide for my AMP2, AMP1 students for that matter to try and show them that if you understand if you understand the function of these, then you could, you could start, you could wire your brain thinking, well then, is this too much or too little? You can guess what diseases are going on. Does that make sense? Right? That's what you've got to do with all this. All right? Any questions so far?